to practice by standing at the top of the mat today. As you find yourself in mountain pose, turn the palms open by your side. Take a moment to turn the gaze low or close your eyes. Nice deep inhale, expand. As you exhale, draw in, find your strength. Using that breath to continue on seeking awareness. Your body in this space, in this time. Today we're opening for our 45 minute all levels practice. Right at the top here, the sun salutation. Open your eyes, lift the arms up to the sky. And exhale, bend the knees and drape forward over your feet. Take the hands all the way to your thighs. Inhale, half lift, making a full L shape in the body. And then step back to plank. Lower flat down to the mat. Peel the chest up for cobra. Nice and easy here. First time around. And press back to your heels in child's pose. Pause in child's, child's pose and walk the hands over towards the right side. Enjoy the side body stretch and reach here. And then walk the hands over towards the second side. As you come back into the center, rise up to all fours. Go through cat and cow a few times. Feel free to move at the pace that works for you here as you open more about the body in these first few minutes of practice. On your next exhale, tuck your toes and lift up and back to downward facing dog. And then look in between your hands and make your move forward, a step, a jump, a walk. Inhale, half lift. Again, bring the hands high to get that full extension here in the beginning. And then fold over your feet. Stand all the way up and reach the arms to the sky. The palms together, center of the chest. A little quicker for the second round here. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back to plank and hold there for a moment. From plank on the toes or knees down, add in four push-ups, down and up. Big tricep push-ups, so hug the elbows into the side. Find the range of motion that works for you, knees or toes. And then lie flat down onto the mat. Shalabhasana, reach your hands back, turn the palms to the sky, lift everything that you can up. Release down, press back to child's pose. Change to downward facing dog. Look in between the hands, step or jump forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Stand, reach the arms to the sky. And then palms come back to the center of the chest. Pause here for a moment, get a couple of breaths. 
Here's our time to set a deeper intention. If there's one driving point for you to find focus in this practice. Still here in the month of May, we're going to eclipse our spring equinox. As we play in the field of possibilities all month long. Perhaps it's starting to see the new blossoms open now. From here, open the eyes, take the hands to your waist, keep the right foot forward, and step your left foot back. Squiggle your way to your full stride. Pull the torso straight up and down and lift the arms to the sky. High lunge. Come to a twist with your left arm, draping across the right leg, right hand behind you. Just kind of look over that right shoulder. Inhale, lift both arms back up to the sky. Drop the back heel down as if you're going to warrior two, but take the hands all the way down to the floor in down dog lunge. Try to reach the hands towards the left corner of the mat as you broaden your front right knee more out towards the right side. Walk the hands around the front foot, pick up the back heel again, revolve lunge, lift the right hand high. Step the hand down, step both feet to the front of the mat. Stand up, lift the arms to the sky, keep the left foot forward, and step the right foot back. So you start that high lunge on the second side, again, squiggling, finding your length. Feet still hip distance apart here so that you can hold your balance. Add the twist, it's right hand across your front thigh. Foot to the side, even back over your left shoulder. Keep breathing. Untwist, arms go back up. Spin the back heel down. And then reach the hands down to the floor. Walk them out towards the right corner. Down dog lunge on the second side, really getting into the Broad expanse and opening around the front hip in particular. Bring it into your regular low lunge. So you pick up the back heel, hands around the front foot. Revolved lunge, left hand high. Set it down, step both feet to the front of the mat. Stand up, reach the arms all the way high. Utkatasana, bend the knees, sit into the thighs. And then bring the arms lower to shoulder height and sit a little lower into the legs. Bring your belly all the way down onto the thighs. So you've got that pressure of legs up, belly down. Sink your weight back into your heels and sit a little bit lower. You've got this. Next breath, inhale, stand all the way up, arms to the sky. Take it into crescent pose, lean to the one side. Squeeze in your glutes, push down through your feet and lean. Come across your center, up and over to the second side. And then come right back to the middle. Exhale, forward fold. Step back to plank pose. We add back in our push-ups again. From knees or toes, give it four more right here. For always option to hold the top of the plank for some static work. Lie flat down onto the belly, reach the hands behind you, and fly, lift everything up. 
Good, lower it down, press back to child's pose. Out of child's pose, come to all fours. And then go down to your forearms, right forearm, left forearm. Feel free to clasp the hands, have the shoulders um, right over top of the elbows. And then step it back so that you're in full forearm plank. Even if I'm gonna use the knees, I usually come for a moment into the full pose and then drop knees so that they're behind the line of the hips quite a bit here. If it works for you, keeping knees up, straight legs. Think lengthen the tailbone without a heavy scoop under. And look a little forward past the fingers. You're still here, hold that forearm plank. We've got this. Release the knees down, crawl back up to your hands. And send your right foot forward to the outside of the right hand. And then try to recre recreate that forearm lunge. What am I trying to say? Forearm plank but with your right foot in the lunge. So we go back down to the hands. And lift the back knee off of the ground. Ways to modify this would be to stay up on the hands, but with a bend in the elbows, or to place up a yoga block under the forearms. Everybody, lower your back knee to the ground. Crawl back up to the hands. Keep the right foot forward there and take your full twist, left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Place the palms together, point the right elbow to the sky. Stay as you are or lift the back knee again to make the back leg as straight and firm as you do in plank. Step by step to go down as well, lower the back knee. Move yourself out of that twist. Around to all fours. And go for a second side, so swing the left foot forward. Come down to the forearms. Sometimes leaving that back knee down, you can get a little lower. Try to have the front knee pretty close to the outer shoulder. And if you're going for that full lift of the back knee, extend through the back heel like you would in full plank. As you walk it up to the hands, lower the back knee. Two separate static poses, crawl your way up, and then right elbow goes to the outside of the thigh. Stack the hands, left elbow to the sky. Again, you're either keeping right knee on the ground or lift it up here. Seeing the stages and steps to pose, both as you come in. And slowly make your way out of the pose. Downward facing dog. You might have seen an email yesterday. I've got some changes and updates coming for us starting in April. This class will change. So the title of Power Yoga, it won't be much different than how it's being taught on a regular basis. Come forward to plank pose just like this. So 
sometimes a little quicker in motion, sometimes a little bit slower. All things that both give us a challenge and yet we can find doable. Lie flat down onto the belly. Flip over to sit down. Take your hands behind you for reverse table pose. Point the fingers either towards your feet or out towards the long edges of your mat and lift your seat up. Every time you take an inhale breath, look and watch your belly expand. Every time we exhale, we'll try to draw our low ribs closer to our hips. Pull your right knee into your chest off of the ground and stretch the legs straight. Pull it back in and set the foot down. Of course, this is a progression, add it or don't. Go to the second side, left knee in. Extend. Good. Pull it back in. Set the foot down. Set your butt down, arms out. Boat pose, lift both feet off of the ground. Keeping the knees at the same place, tap toe down and up one at a time. One foot at a time. And then keep both feet up. Squeeze the inner thighs more in, lift the chest more up. Maybe straighten the legs without letting the chest fall. And the feet get to go down, you flip back over like a little bear crawl here with the knees just barely off of the ground. Hold here in your bear crawl, straight arms, knees, a couple of inches off of the ground. And then crawl the feet closer to the line of the wrist and set the knees onto your upper arm bones. You want to feel that same sense of drawing the navel up and in as you come to Bakasana. So now feet come off of the mat one or two at a time. As you lower the feet back down, stretch it back to your full plank and into downward facing dog. And then lift the right leg up into the air, three-legged dog. Pull the knee to the chest, hover forward and step all the way through. Things we've already done, come to high lunge, arms to the sky. Add the twist, left arm, left arm just drapes across the right leg, so we're keeping our torso upright here. And then arms back to the sky, this time warrior two. So as you spend the back heel down, keep the torso upright, stem arms out. Nice deep bend in the front knee, push the weight into the back leg. Right elbow to the knee, swing the left arm, palm down overhead for extended side angle. And then look down at your right foot and take the hands to either side for your good old regular low lunge. Set both feet back to plank, lower flat down to the mat, vinyasa flow here. Lift the chest, downward dog, lift the hips up and back. Second side, lift the left leg high. Knee to the chest, hover forward. Step the foot all the way through, come up to high lunge. Keep the torso vertical, drape the right hand just across the front thigh, look over your left shoulder. A nice twist, mostly in the upper back, thoracic spine here. And then arms go back to the sky. Back heel down, warrior two, open up. Nicely done. 
Elbow to knee, top arm, palm down overhead. Full side body stretch. Low lunge, let the hands come around the front foot, pick up the back heel, step to plank. Again, vinyasa flow, lower down through cobra, downward facing dog. Side plank, you can pick your option here. Right hand, outer edge of the right foot. Cross the leg in front, stack the leg or lift the top leg. Do you take the left arm to the sky? Another variation would be bottom knee down. That can help if you're looking for some extra uh, steadiness for the shoulders. Go back to full plank. Side plank on the left hand, outer edge of the left foot. Again, any options, step the right foot forward, back knee down, stack the feet, lift and play, right leg high. What suits your intention for this practice? Again, back to downward facing dog. Bend your knees and walk your hands backwards to your feet so you're at the end of your sticky mat. Separate the feet wider than the hips so you can take an easy rag doll pose. Have a bend in the knees, hold on to the elbows and sway from side to side. So the oh so important to release. Even when, and perhaps especially when working in some powerful positions and poses, we've got to give the body that release so that it has the ability to stabilize and strengthen. Okay, slowly roll up to standing. Shoulders go up and back. From the center of your mat, we'll take Eagle Pose. Eagle Pose will go into Warrior Three. Wrap your right arm under the left. Mentioning that since those two poses link, we're gonna to try to find our balance without setting the right foot down in between. Bend the knee and sit into your thighs and then wrap your right leg on top of the left leg. Squeeze the right foot to the outer left calf. Little eagle crunch from the standing position. Can you make your elbows touch down to your knees? And then come back upright as vertical as you can. Knees and elbows as far away from one another as possible. Keeping the arms as is, unwrap your legs, send it back behind you, tilt the torso forward again for warrior three with eagle arms. And wrap the leg once more for eagle. It's concentration to move you in between the two. Set the right foot down, stand up tall, open your arms up like Goddess. And then take the left elbow under the right. Other options are to hold your shoulders, back of hands or front of hands. Bend the knees, sit into the legs. Weight goes into the right leg so that the left leg can wrap on top. For more ease, that uh, left foot stays out away from the calf. That feels all right for you. And knees in particular tend to be the, the stopping point. But if it's working, you squeeze the foot to the outer calf. Okay, take your crunch. 
elbows down to the knees. Don't worry about the wobbles and bobbles, they'll happen. What do you do in the midst of it that matters? Come back upright. Warrior arms. Warrior three. Unwrap the leg, send it back. And return to warrior three, wrap the left leg. Two feet down, stand up, goddess arms. Inhale, reach the arms straight up to the sky and fold over your legs. Half lift. We're back to downward facing dog. Take the right leg up into the air, three legged dog. Step it all the way forward into your low lunge. Half moon pose, much like warrior three, but you get an extra hand to balance you. Right hand stays down, lift the left side. And then go right back to where you came from in that low lunge. Twisted monkey, lower your left knee. Broaden the right knee, hip, foot out to the side, 30 degrees. Pull the back heel in for a quad stretch. Reach the front arm out first in front of you, then up to the sky and then back behind you. That'll help to rotate and open the shoulder in a way that makes that position easier to catch. Pull the heel in as close to the sit bone as possible. Bend in the elbow, you can pull, pull, pull in. That's it. Take the arm into that full rainbow circle to come out of the position most safely as well. And step it all the way back to downward facing duck. Second side with the left leg. Step it through. Slide your weight into left hand, left foot with the right side, half moon pose. Ardha Chandrasana. Again, it slides all the way back into your low lunge. As you do that, drop the back knee, bring the hands to the inside. Heel toe the left foot more to the side, turn it out. As you put the weight onto the right hand, pull your right heel towards your seat. And again, left hand first reaches out in front and then open up to the sky, completing the rainbow shape. Reach your hands back to your foot. Get that nice broad opening across the chest and head of the shoulder. Trace the rainbow back to the front as you release the leg. This time we're going to plank pose, set the hands, and then swing the left foot back. Plank pose. This is your last set of push-ups. It's either holding steady in plank, taking it down to the knees, or staying up on the toes, or more tricep push-ups, down and up. Try to keep with your same whole range of motion. Push back to child's pose. Make the upper body look as much as you can the same way from the hands to the hips, but we're changing to garland squat. So you crawl up to your feet, heels can stay off of the ground as you sit your butt down and back towards your heels, knees out to the side. 
And again, keep reaching your arms out long in front of you and letting the torso fold in between the legs for garland squat. That arm balance that came at the beginning, Vakasana, we tried it with straighter arms, coming at it from bare pose. Now, we're doing that again, but I want you to try to stay low in your hips, legs, feet. So now walk your hands back to try to make your triceps, your upper arm bones, fit beneath your shins. And you're either holding there, both hands, both feet on the ground, or you do kind of blossom and lift up maybe halfway, but still with a nice bend in the elbows to try to get your feet to levitate off of the ground. If your feet are up, set them back down, sink into your low garland squat, and reach your arms out in front of you. And there we'll change and let ourselves sit all the way down to our seat. And then roll all the way down to your back. Sit on your hands, feet straight up into the air. Leg raises. Conservatively take it one leg at a time so that you find your strength and control. Feeling good there, glue the feet together and go two feet at the same time, two legs. Every time we exhale, you can open the mouth and kind of breathe out. Allowing the low ribs to really knit down towards the hips. Strong in the inner core. Continue to float the legs up and down here. A little bit more. And then hug the knees into the chest to give yourself a nice strong squeeze. Take the hands out to a T-shape. This is firmly rotated pose, first keeping bent knees. Take the knees out over the line of the hips, not more forward to your chest, so already just this position should engage the core. And I'll let both knees drop towards the right, but they hover above the ground. Great work for obliques and transverse abdominis. Bring it back to the center. Slowly hover the legs over towards the left. And into the middle. Keep the same thing with the knees bent or a greater challenge is straight legs. Straight legs and firmly rotated pose. It's a little bit like a jackknife sink. You're trying to hover the feet now above the right hand. Everything goes back to center and above the left hand. Everything goes back to center. Everyone re-bend the knees, let them fall more towards the line of the chest now. Firmly rotated pose with a full release. Drop the legs over towards the right side. We do this plenty in a supine twist. Or calming and relaxing here. I've learned over the years of practice that most important aspect of capturing and finding power be able to capture and find release. Come across.
across your center. Drop the legs over to the second side. And then just let it be. One, let's bring our knees across the center, set the soles of the feet down, cross the right ankle over your left thigh, point the knee out to the side in a figure four shape. Left leg comes closer to you, thread the arms through, hold the behind the left thigh or on top of the left shin. arms, drop the left foot back down to the mat. So keeping your right leg like this, bring the left knee down to the mat over towards the right side, keeping the right foot on top of the left thigh so that you get into a psoas stretch. So as wraps low back round our hips towards the inner thigh. Nice and careful, come back up. Place the right foot down to the mat. Quick little bridge pose in between sides. Lift the hips, expand through the front side of the body, and then lower it back down. Just kind of a little reset. Okay, second side, left heel goes over the right thigh. Point the knee out to the side. Certainly got a lot of work to do, even keeping the right foot on the ground here. You could stay there or pull the right leg in, thread the arms. Left hands can help you continually open the left leg out away from your body. Let's set the right foot back down to the floor. Going into that psoas stretch, the right knee falls towards the left side, full inner edge of the leg. My thigh, knee, and calf are actually all floating off of the ground here. So it doesn't have to come all the way flat down. And then carefully come back up and thread the leg to all fours. Bridge pose, lift the hips. And lower it back down. Full body stretch, stretch your arms overhead, legs long. And with a little banana shape here, cross one leg over the other and then lean towards that same side so the body ends up looking like a crescent or a banana shape. And then you walk it back to your neutral. And the other leg goes on top. Lean to your second side. Again, back to your neutral. And wiggle it out. Any last movements here? Uh, 
and then find your final relaxation pose. You can stay lying back or shift to a seated position. Just like we started, allowing the awareness of breath to really take over the moment. Always welcome you to stay here a little longer as you choose. Are those ready to move along? Come find your seated position. Palms together, bow in gratitude for yourself to each other and for this practice. We'll close this time of practice and sending an opening to the next moment in the sound of Om. Empty out your breath, breathe in.